Is Linux light or Linux heavy? Let's find out together. We download the ISO image from its official website, selecting the most suitable server and location. Linux Lite is an Ubuntu-based distribution created in 2012, using XFCE as the default desktop environment. It aims to provide an intuitive desktop experience. According to its website, it has had 19 million downloads so far. Upon starting, the installer prompts you to select the language and keyboard layout. One initial advantage is its good hardware detection. Right from the start, it detects the Wi-Fi adapter and asks if you would like to connect, so we enter the necessary details. Next, it asks for the disk partitioning type. I chose to erase the disk completely, carefully selecting the correct disk, and then entered the location. Now, we input the username, hostname, user, password, and also indicate that we want automatic login. We then wait for the installation to finish. According to its page, Linux Lite is designed with simplicity and performance in mind, claiming to be secure, stable, and having a modern interface. Once the installation is complete, we reboot the computer and Linux Lite loads for the first time. Upon startup, we see the modified XFCE desktop. The desktop features a dark wallpaper with a light blue logo. We then review the XFCE desktop, which includes most of the applications found in desktop versions. After the review, we open the terminal, which has an attractive styling, user-friendly design, and clean interface. We enlarge the text for better visibility. We install or update NeoFetch Together system information and Sysbench to evaluate the distribution on the same computer we've used in other videos. We run NeoFetch, which provides us with information about the kernel, desktop, window manager, and initial memory usage, though the disk installation is yet to be done. Using terminal commands, we gather the distribution name, kernel version, memory and disk usage and compare these results with those from NeoFetch. Next, we perform the Y2038 bug test, which checks for support, and execute the systemd analyze command to measure the system boot time, excluding firmware time. Now, we use Sysbench for the evaluation, starting with the CPU. We observe single-thread performance and then five-thread performance through mathematical operations. We continue with thread and mutex tests to analyze processor load management, as well as resource blocking, synchronization, and efficiency. We assess both memory read and write performance, using sequential benchmarks to measure the system's ability to handle memory operations. Next, we prepare the necessary files needed to evaluate disk input and output performance, and execute the test to determine the overall storage performance. We run the top command to measure memory consumption by Firefox, but realize it isn't pre-installed, so we quickly proceed to install Firefox. We rerun the top command and launch Firefox with one window, without any extensions enabled, to observe the initial resource consumption. We open a second tab and load a video, then a third tab, and finally a fourth tab, observing how memory usage increases with each new tab. We have now completed the review and evaluation of Linux Lite. Let's analyze the results observed and measured during the tests and observations. Linux Lite uses the Ubuntu LTS kernel version. It installed 2,342 packages and uses recent versions of XFCE as the desktop and XFWM as the window manager. The initial memory consumption was 1 GB, which is an average value. As for disk installation, it took up 12 GB, which is a significant amount of space used. Linux Lite does indeed have support for the Y2038 bug, and the boot time, excluding firmware, was 99 seconds, which is quite long compared to other distributions. In the CPU tests with Sysbench, it achieved over 1,083 events per second, a very good result for the tested computer, but the thread test was average. The thread test was very poor, with just 1,377 events per second. The Mutex test produced 11 events per second, which is considered an average value. In the memory read and write tests, the results were also average, indicating that the distribution does not handle memory access very efficiently. Among the different open Firefox tabs, it consumed an average of 411 metabytes per tab, a notably high value compared to other distributions. Regarding disk read and write performance, Linux Lite achieved 10 megabytes per second for reading and almost 7 for writing, both average values among the evaluations.
In conclusion, Linux Lite has some advantages, but also some performance drawbacks. Some of the evaluation metrics suggest that it's not as lightweight as it might seem. That's it for now. We'll continue with more performance tests of distributions. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. See you next time.